We're in Alaska, so we thought what better way to experience Alaskan wilderness than to go to the zoo, where captivity is king. Everybody that we've asked, what do we do while we're in Alaska, they're like, well, you could drive like three hours outside of Anchorage and that would take you owning your own car and being able to idle it outside the woods while you go fight off a cougar with a rifle. That doesn't sound like a feasible plan. Like, what are the things that tourists do? And they're like, well, they come here during the summer and they drink and they come here during the winter and they drink and there's a drinking place. <laughs> it's like, all right, can we shoot guns? They're like, come to my house. And I'm like, no. So now we're at the zoo because we're forcing the nature issue. I refuse to not see animals. This is a tank. That looks like a polar bear had explosive diarrhea. The Bronx Zoo got rid of cages in like 1937 because of animal cruelty. <laughs> and they're like, no, we don't care. Let's just, let's just throw a crate around these animals. T-Rex doesn't want to be fed. He wants to hunt. He wants to surprise us. 35 million years in the making. Can you also tell us what you consumed before you came here? Oh, um, two, two edibles. Two edibles. Last night, three threw me into a vortex of, uh, of haunted self-doubt because we went back to the hotel. I was the most tired I've ever been, and I stayed up strapped to the bed for another hour and a half. So we've seen our first outdoor animal. It did just dawn on me that, like, typically the Bronx Zoo also has a lot of no-shows in the winter, and we're just walking around a snowy gravel. What's your, your best guess as to what that is? That's just a regular German Shepherd. Wow, I knew I felt a kinship with this animal, both in both in its... <laughs> Update, mother, yeah. it's not a bear or a German Shepherd at all. It's a Wolverine, which is the German Shepherd of bears. COVID-sensitive species. <laughs> Imagine Wolverine's like, I have no smell. I have no smell. <laughs> it just bites something and it's like, I can't even taste. I, I told that story on the podcast before, right? When I thought I was going to go to a karate class when I was four years old, and instead my dad took me a sneak attack tap dancing class and thought I was going to be totally cool with that. And then when I walked in, he said I looked like a Wolverine on PCP at a dog show. He said I was truly a violent animal, whirling dervish, smashing other kids, kicking people with the clackety parts of the sneaks, and just fucking freaking out. These are not exhibits as much as they are construction sites of exhibits. I mean, the zoo has some of the nicest gravel I've ever seen. <laughs> that looks like my wife's placenta after, after her C-section. Just a... And by the way, look at the Alec baldwin size head on this owl. The giant Irish undefined, no jawline, slick back hair. Fucking huge booze head on this shitty owl. I ever since I killed one in my car, huh? I've told that right. Mm -hmm. I was driving home from my girlfriend's house in like freshman year of college. It was like three, four a.m. I just knew those roads like the back of my hands, and I'm driving on my back road, and a huge owl swooped in front of my car, hit the front of my Malibu, rolled up onto my hood, and then on my windshield was just like this, and I windshield wipered it off of my car while screaming at the top of my lungs. And then I came back the next day to see if, like, what had happened actually happened, and there was just a huge three-foot circular puddle of blood and owl feathers. So, he never found out how many looks it took to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. Dude, this is what they feed the velociraptors. Is it a yak? Well, oh, an ox. That's a musk ox, so not only is it an ox, but it smells like dog shit. He's coming. He's like making eye contact with us. Yeah, he's telling us to get him out of there. <laughs> Another exhibit where the animal is <laughs> yes, nowhere to be found. There's holes that indicate it's made a mis an escape. <laughs> like, look, that is that is burrowed so deep under the fence that this thing, there's no way they've kept this in here. We, I would not be surprised if we like turn smiling from like seeing a turkey and there's a fucking lynx just staring at us completely out in the open. That's not real, dude. That's like a fucking, you know how there was that jacked kangaroo? That's a jacked camel. Oh my God, and look at its back cascading over like a Dr. Seuss tree. Do you see that? It has like a hipster haircut. It has an undercut and the thing flopping over the side. 
It's crazy though that it lives in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia and China, but it's just here in the snow. Oh, Mary Ellen and Nobby Siegelhorst. <laughs> Good old knobs. I miss him. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. Why are you doing I cannot that? sleep. I cannot sleep tonight. Look at their haircuts. Anytime I see porcupines, all I remember is Homeward Bound when Chance the dog gets hit in the side of the face and they, like, thinking that they did that for the movie, like, they stabbed that dog in the face with a porcupine. How did they not? They, it was embedded in the animal's face. Like, unless they were documentary style filming it and that wasn't supposed to happen and they just caught that and then it became a part of the narrative. <laughs> that, it just looks like, a, like a, a fetal alcohol syndrome horse with no antlers. It's like a Clydesdale couldn't stop nipping during pregnancy. <laughs> The screams and murders that happen in this zoo are like so, you can't tell if it's a person. I mean, somehow there's a dog exhibit. Did you hear that? We have to go towards that, right? Yay! As, and as you can see here, wow, that, that was like, that was wilderness Wilford Brimley. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like the diabetes guy. My friend Mishu used to own a dog that was half coyote, half dog. And he also had a dog before that that was half wolf, half dog. And it was just a huge problem anytime they had anybody outside of their family there. It would, it would like, as if it was in a wild animal situation. They're like, just don't go in the garage because it'll tear you limb from limb. So we'll just go in there, feed it fresh fish, and then make sure it's full <laughs> before it sees you. What? Like, all right, cool, man. I'm not going to come over anymore. He's dead now. Not the dog, my friend. Look behind you. They're seeing natural dominance play out before us, and this raven coming down the path is terrifying. The edible has officially turned. I'm legitimately worried about these coyotes and their eye contact, and the fact that these there's too much space in between the fence grommets. What are they, lynx? I mean, I am a natural, na National Geographic photographer. This is the best picture. It's not really that good. Isn't it weird also how we just decided, we're like, we saw that and they're like, that's our country. <laughs> that's our country and a bird. China. That's <laughs> like. High on the hills is a lonely goat herd. Lay, oh, lay, oh, lay, oh. And in a me, but no, no, me, no, no, lay, oh, lay, oh, no. Oh, it's crazy they gotta be separated too. They're like Siamese fighting fish. Classic catty women. Oh Can't be put in the same area together. They're just starting rumors about each other, saying you're looking fat today. Your tail's looking a little. Well, you need extensions. That looks like my dad. Legitimately, the way in which it lumbers, like the same lack of grace and just boom, 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 boom. What did Crew say look like your dad? Like a walrus? Oh, yeah, a walrus goes, is that Grandpa Cannon? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Did you know, and some of these empty cages are just reminding me of this, did you know that the Bronx Zoo had a human exhibit until like 1906? They had a pygmy guy that they just stuck in a cage until well after slavery was like eradicated from the United States and they finally set him free and like gave him a suit and were like, find a job. Like nobody helped him assimilate. They were just like booted him out of the door of the Bronx Zoo and were like, all right, buddy, we guess you're free. And then in like two days later, he like carved Brooks was here into some, you know. He hung himself. Patreon.com slash scenario pod. Look out. <laughs> I'm cold now. I'm still out of nowhere cold in my body. I was just so excited to tell you that they had those eagle hats. So this was fun. I had a good time. We saw roughly 32% of the animals that they have to offer. I do wager that at least the wolverine was dead in its cage. I really enjoyed myself and I think I'm looking forward to treating ourselves to another meal because we actually went out of our way to do something productive.
This is mostly an airport documentary. Reindeer hot dogs. I dare Putin to take back Alaska. Here, kitty, kitty. Yeah, <laughs> naked from the way down. Oh, I'm not dropping my door. I might be this small. Our flight got canceled, because why wouldn't it? Good. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 